This is the piece of furniture I'll be making over today. It's a vintage wooden sideboard. I like the Queen Anne style legs in the front, but it's otherwise pretty plain. And the top has some fading from the sun. So let's get started with the makeover. I like the hardware on the drawers, so that can stay, but for now I need to remove it so I can sand the drawers. All I have to do to remove it is straighten out the pins and pull it out the front. I don't want to lose any of the pieces, so I'll put them somewhere safe in the meantime. I'll be painting these drawers, and I want to remove the shiny finish, so I use a nail file for sanding. All I'm doing is removing a little bit of the sealer protecting the wood so the paint will stick nicely. I don't need to sand this down to bare wood. Then I used a soft cloth to clean up the dust. Normally I'd be painting after this step, but first I'm gluing on my embellishments. Here's some lace that would work really well for decorating a piece of furniture because it has some dimension. This lace has a much flatter pattern, but it would still look really nice once it's painted. For larger pieces of lace, you can cut certain aspects of the design out and glue those to your furniture. This is the design I chose to cut out of my lace, and I'm attaching it with Fabri-Tac glue. The shape and size of the lace piece I cut would work really well at the top of this Queen Anne leg, so that's where I'm attaching it. If you don't have Fabri-Tac, you could also use tacky glue. I made sure the entire lace applique was firmly glued, so no pieces pop up later. It looks strange now, but once it's painted, it'll look like carved wood. Whatever I do on one side, I like to mirror it and do the exact same thing on the opposite side because furniture is often symmetrical. Next, I'm adding this flat lace to the drawer fronts. This lace has a very clear repeating pattern and it'll be obvious if I don't line it up well. So I'm making sure to line up the center hole of the lace over the hole for the drawer hardware. I applied Fabri-Tac to the back of the lace and used my finger to pat it and distribute it. I left excess lace on either end so I can reposition it and center it while the glue is still wet. Leaving some excess is a lot easier than trying to cut the lace to the perfect size before gluing. Then I just cut the excess lace off either end. I used the same lace as the drawers to fill the empty panels on both ends. I thought the foot of the Queen Anne leg looked plain, so I cut up the same applique I used on the top to fit it on the bottom. I used the largest teardrop shape in the middle and then the two smaller ones on either side. Then I did the same thing on the other leg. I'm using this white cotton string to add more detail. I started applying the string on one of the sides. The sides are straight, so I just pulled the string straight across my glue. I used my finger to push the string in place to make sure it goes straight across. The front has a scalloped design, so I laid down some glue and used the string to accentuate the curves. I really liked using the Fabri-Tac for this application because it grabs the string so quickly. To follow the curve, I would pinch it from opposite directions like you might do with a pie crust. The string has a twist like a rope, so I'm hoping it'll look like carved rope molding when it's painted. I used the same string to add detail to the top. I ran a bead of glue across the face of the sideboard, and then I laid my string across, making sure there's enough overhang to wrap around the sides. After cutting off the ends, I used a bit of glue to keep the string from fraying. For a little more detail, I used this really small scale nylon string and glued it under the drawers. 
With all the appliques and trim in place, I'm ready for paint. I know the paint looks white on camera, but this is actually a soft bluish green color called Palladian Blue by Benjamin Moore. I'm using a small flat brush to make sure I get the paint into all the nooks and crannies of the lace. As I apply more paint, all of the disparate pieces I glued on start looking like one carved piece of furniture. The paint unifies all the different pieces, so you can use a combination of different colors and different materials in this technique. I applied two coats of paint to get full coverage. I got a little bit of paint on the edge of the drawers, which prevents them from going all the way back in, so I'm using a bit of fine sandpaper to clean that up. To emphasize the newly added details, I'm using some brown acrylic paint and watering it down and applying it like a glaze. When I apply the watered down light brown paint, it settles into some of the details and then I wipe most of it away with a cloth. The light brown paint adds just enough contrast to emphasize the details in the lace and the trim. For additional contrast, you could use a darker paint color. I used the same glaze on the top as well. To emphasize the lace appliques, I'm dry brushing them with gold paint. I applied the same gold paint to the rope trim, the nylon string, and the lace appliques on the drawers. I did two coats of dry brushing of the gold paint to get the coverage I wanted. I sealed it with matte Mod Podge before replacing the hardware on the drawers. Lace and rope are just the beginning because you can glue anything with dimension to furniture to make it look like carved wood. Thank you for watching and make sure to check out my other videos.